What do we got here? We got this little guy. Let's see. Let's see what we can do. Grab him, get all these controls. Key, I think that worked. Keyed everything. Look at that. Ooh. All the controls are keyed. Perfect. Hey, what's up? I'm Billy Dow, and let's do some Python coding. Uh, so, I'm actually a lead layout artist at Luma Pictures. I don't do any kind of development work or anything specifically. But over the years, I've kind of collected some knowledge, uh, some information on how to do a bit of coding here and there. It served me very well, got me out of a lot of sticky situations. And you know, I didn't really set out to learn Python. I just kind of learned it as I've gone. And I'm gonna show you guys pretty much how I started off learning Python, nothing crazy, nothing tricky. So this is what we're gonna, what we're gonna do uh, by the end of this lesson. I've got this little piece of code here. If I run it, what it does is it sets a key on every single control. I don't need to select anything and pretty much anywhere where I have my uh, my cursor, my timeline slider. If I select this code, run it, you can see it's gonna set some keys on all the controls, pretty much every single control. So I'll show you guys how to use this little piece of code to do the same for any any rigs that you guys have. So it's not specific to this particular rig, but yeah, just a quick shout out. If you guys actually want a free rig that you can follow along with, you can download this rig over at decog.com. So let's begin. So just delete all that code. In fact, let me just close the script editor, make a new scene completely. So let's start fresh. How, how the hell do you start coding inside of Maya? Well, you come down to this little button here, click on that guy, opens up the script editor. You know, yours might be floating like this. I've just docked mine over to the corner. That's how I like to do it. If you just right click in this area at the bottom, you can go new tab. You want to create a new Python tab. You're probably not going to have this many tabs because if you do, then uh, you definitely don't need to be watching this video because that means you've done a lot of scripting. In any case, let's go over some of the script editor stuff. So these buttons here, open, you know, open and source, save. That's all pretty standard, but let's let's come over here. What what are these buttons? This button here clears the top top panel. This button here clears the bottom panel. So if I type some random stuff, boom, clears the bottom panel. This one clears both. So if I type some random stuff and I run it, you get an error. It doesn't matter if I click on this. It clears the top and the bottom, making everything nice and clean. And that's how I like it. These buttons do the same. This shows just the top panel. This shows just the bottom panel. This one shows both panels. Pretty much want to show both panels the whole time. I don't know why you'd even want to use these other buttons. These buttons here, don't worry about them. This button here, this one's the important one. This one is what you click on if you want to run your script. So let's start. Let's type something. I want to type print space quotation hello world and now I don't know why but every single programming course out there in the world will teach you how to print hello world as the first thing you ever do I'm not gonna break tradition because I don't want the wrath of the coding gods to come down on me so uh, here's a little trick that I learned if you select all your code and you run it it's gonna print hello world it's gonna show you your code that you just executed it's going to show you the result but it's also going to keep the code down here so if i don't select anything you'll see what happens if i hit this run button this play button my code's gone that sucks you can control z to undo that's fine or you can copy this code and paste it back down there but i think it's just a little bit easier just to select everything and then run the code and later on it's going to come in handy because you can select just lines of code and run separate lines of code so if i do another line print goodbye world it's a little bit dark but I can select just this line and hit play it'll just execute just the goodbye world and it'll show me the result clear that let's get to going with other stuff 
So there's a concept known as variables. What's a variable? Well, it's just algebra. So if you go A, you know, in algebra, you remember you can store values as letters. You're basically representing a certain value as, you know, a letter. The letter is basically the placeholder. So I can say A is equal to one and run this, nothing happens, all good. But I could also say B is equal to two and I can run them both. Nothing really happens. It's not giving me any results. It's just showing me what my code is. But here's a cool little thing. So once you run the code, it's kind of stored inside of memory. So I can recall these values now. I can say A plus B and select this code, run that. You can see A plus B result equals three because A is one, B is two, you get the idea. You can get a little bit more advanced. You don't have to use A, B. You can say, uh, you can say, give it a name. For example, I'm gonna say Billy is equal to, uh, let's do over 9,000 or four nines. So run that, Billy is equal to 9,000. Now I can say print Billy. And what print does is just prints whatever the value is. So in this case, I've stored Billy as 9,999, print it. Look at that, nothing special, but it does what you want it to do. Cool, so now that you know what a variable is, let's see, I wanna show you guys what a list is. So use A again, so a list is basically a list of values. So before we just stored one, so that's just one value. So you can store a list if you just do open bracket, close bracket. Anything between this is what's gonna get stored inside of the list. So I can say, instead of just one, I can say one, two, three, four. I'm just separating all these different items with the comma. Pretty simple stuff. So now if I go print A, just execute all this code, you can see it just prints out this list. Here's the cool thing, I can say, I want just one particular item in this list. I can print a zero and zero is basically the first item in the in the list if I say one it'll be the second item so it's just referring to whatever item inside of the list is so because this is a list a is a list I can say I want a particular item within that list for for this example I'm going to use zero so I'm going to get the first item which is one so if you remember before we had B is equal to, let's, let's give B in another number, let's give it 10. Run that, okay, so it's stored in memory. So now I can do print A zero plus B. So it's pretty much taking the first item in the A list, it's taking B which is 10 and it's adding them together and we're getting 11. You can also use other you know, mathematical operations like minus, run that see minus nine because B is 10. So, you know, if you take one minus 10, you get minus nine. But you can also do something like multiply, which is the asterisk symbol. So if I do this, I get 10 because, you know, one times 10 is just 10. But let's just say, let's, let's take this number four. So it's zero, one, two, three, the third item in the list is the value of four. We're gonna run this again. You should see 40, because it's done the multiplication. Cool, let's do something like what we were doing before and keying all the controls. First thing you wanna do is import maya.cmds as cmds. What the hell does this mean? Don't worry about it. Just do this for now. And that's how you get access to all of Maya's commands. So I'm gonna run this command I'm gonna come down here. Let's do a few other lines. Let's reference in that rig. So get this rig, reference this guy in. Cool, ready to roll. So basically what I wanna do is I'm gonna select all the controls and I wanna store all these controls in a list sort of like what we did before with the numbers, but this time I want the names of the controls. How do I do that? Well, let's just make a new variable called controls and let's use a Maya command now, cmds. See up here, we imported this Maya commands and we basically said, let's store all the commands under this little 
name, this placeholder name called CMDS. That's what we're doing here. So we're accessing CMDS now. And within CMDS, we're gonna, let's say we're gonna use this command, ls. How do I know this command? Well, I've been using Maya for a long time, but um, in one of the future videos, I'll show you guys how to basically find out all the different commands that you have inside of Maya, and you can do all the different cool things that you pretty much wanna do. But for now, let's just use this ls command, which means list. So we're gonna list sl, which is selection. And we're gonna say true. That means yes, this is true. We do we do want to do this. Um, and if I run this command now, let's run everything. It's not really shown us any results, but what it's done is it's stored all the controls inside of this control uh, variable. So if I come down here and I say print control, run that back. Now I get this really big list that it's just printed here. It's so big, it probably won't even fit on this entire screen. I scroll, you see it's it's basically all the controls I have selected. It's kind of gotten the name for it. It's inside this little quotation thing, and that's that's what we call a string. So if you remember before we did print hello world, this Basically anything between the quotations is what's known as a string. It's just a string of text. Um, this is a single quotation. Doesn't really matter, you can use double quotation. You can use single quotation. If I run this code, it will say print hello world. It, it's the same result. In Python, single and double quotations, they don't mean anything different. It's just the same thing. So it's basically stored a string of text but it's a list of string of text. So it's a list of all the different control names stored under there, easy. So let's try to keyframe all of this stuff. So there's a command inside of uh, the CMDS module. This is the module CMDS. So the command is called set keyframe, does exactly what you think it does. And I'm just gonna use this uh, controls list. I'm gonna give it this list so I'm gonna say set keyframe on all these controls that I've stored. Run this and look, voila, it's stored. Move this little thing so you can see, stored all, it's keyed all the controls that we stored. And just to show you, if I if I move the time slider here and I run this code again, it's gonna key everything right down there like that. That's pretty cool, but this only works if you have all the controls selected. Well, what if I don't wanna select all the controls and I wanna set a key on all the controls just by running this little line of code? Well, that's pretty easy. Uh, if we just, if you remember, we stored all the controls and we printed them. So I'm gonna do the same again. I'll just grab all these controls, run this again. So it stores all the controls, uh, all the names of the controls in this control variable let's print it out print ctrl and it's given us a big list so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to copy copy this entire line you can right click and say copy or control c or whatever you want to do uh, to copy that and basically just paste it down here now i've got this long list of names it's pretty much just the name of all the controls I've got selected, which I've stored. So I'm gonna actually paste it right after the equal sign. So now instead of getting all the controls and storing it, I'm just saying, hey, these are all my controls already here. I just wanna store it in this CTRL variable. So now if I make a new line, we can do that CMDS set keyframe again and give it that same variable name control. And I can deselect everything now, and let's just go to another frame, frame 85. And if I hit this play button, it's done what you think it would do, just keyed everything on frame 85. I didn't even have to select any controls. So why is this helpful? Well, if I just delete all these keys, what you can actually do is you can select all this code that you've just done, and you can middle mouse and drag it onto the shelf you can see it right there, let me drag this down a bit. 
So I'm just going to delete that first button. And just to show you guys again, I'm going to delete this middle mouse, drag it on there. I don't know why it's added it twice. Let's try this again. Yeah, it's adding it twice for some strange reason, but you know, it, it's doing what it's supposed to do, which is pretty much um, add the code onto the shelf. All right, let's try this one more time because it's annoying me. Just add one button, please. And it still adds to whatever. You can delete one of them, it's fine. Basically what that button does is it's gonna execute this code without you having to hit run each time and select all the code. It's a little bit painful, but so if I select all this, you see no keys. Let's move this over across here. Okay, you guys see there's uh, no keys on the side here. If I hit the button, now select the control. As you can see, it's keyed framed and it's keyframed everything. So let's just show the graph editor. You can see it's got keyframes on all the controls. So I can move this to anywhere now and it basically just keyframes everything. It's just a nice little way to keyframe all. And you can do it for pretty much every single rig. You just need to select all your controls first. Then you do what we did before, which is use that cmds.ls command, sl as the uh, parameter for the command. And that'll list all your selection. So it'll list anything you have selected. So for example, if I had just a cube selected, I'm just creating a new cube here. If I have this cube selected and I hit play, now if I print whatever's inside of this CTRL variable, you can see it's just P cube one. It's a list, but it's only got one item in the list, which is P cube one. Don't worry about what that U means. It's a little bit confusing, this little U here, but it actually just means it's a Unicode. So it's not just a regular string, it's a Unicode string. If you don't know what that means, don't worry because it doesn't actually matter. And that's it. You just did yourself some Python. Hey, so if you enjoyed that video, make sure you subscribe because I'm gonna be releasing more videos just like this where I do Python not inside of a sandbox environment, I'll be doing it inside of Maya. So it's gonna be completely practical straight away. You can put it to use. And every time I release a new video, I'm gonna be building upon the Python knowledge that I built upon previously. So you're gonna be learning more and more about Python. And before you know it, you're gonna be really good at Python, but you're also gonna be able to use it straight away inside of your day-to-day -day use when you're animating, when you're modeling, you know, any kind of 3D work that you do within Maya, it's going to be completely practical. So, yeah, make sure you stick around.